Mr. Scott, when you portray a man who lives in history, lives on the pages of a newspaper, in other words, everybody has a concept of a man like General Patton, does that make the acting job tougher? Yes, there's a certain amount of uh, authenticity that must be uh, respected. And uh, we try to do that as much as possible in the picture. There's a lot of research that has to be done, and uh, we try to do as much of that as we could. Uh, overall, it's a, it's a more uh, complicated job, I would say, than the normal fictional role. Sure. You could put more of yourself into it, what the writer has, if it's a fictional role. I wouldn't say that. It's just a different kind of, a, of approach, possibly a more uh, clinical approach than, uh, than, a, than a fictional role. In other words, you didn't feel quite as free as you would have with a fictional character to put yourself into it. I think it. that's true because you have, there are certain things that have to be respected that's historically and personally. That's more of a challenge, personal. right? In a way, yes. Uh -huh. uh, in the future, do you anticipate that you would like to do real characters as opposed to fictional characters? It doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as there's some distinctiveness about them, I think that's the most uh, important criterion. Mr. Scott, one knows if they know anything at all about George Scott's performances. But you're a very dynamic actor. You're very strong. When you're on the screen or when you're on the stage or on television, people watch you because you're dynamic. When you come up against a hard-nosed director, a very strong-minded director, and you have a differing concept of the role, how do you resolve that? Well, normally those, <laughs> those problems are resolved before you come up against, uh, as you put it. Usually, if you... Uh, if there's any sort of uh, whisper of uh, uh, controversy that may be involved, those questions are solved before you go into the work. Uh, otherwise, it can lead to disaster uh, for everybody involved. You are a strong-minded man, are you not? I'm, a, I would say, reasonably opinionated, yeah. And you don't mind objecting if something comes up, even on the set, that you hadn't anticipated? No, I think you have to. Uh, you have to uh, find something you believe in and try to stick to it. Is it hard to work in Hollywood? Well, Hollywood doesn't isn't what it was now, what it used to be. Uh, well, Hollywood it's different. filters out yeah, as it different. hits the Midwest, you understand. It's an entirely different system now, and uh, I don't spend much time in Hollywood, only when I am employed. Why not? I, I don't dislike it, but I just don't go there. I live in New York, and uh, it's always been my home. You're no stranger to Kentucky. We play on our TV station with great pride your Flim Flam Man, which you filmed in the Bluegrass. That's right. That's a delightful, wonderful, warm character. You like comedy? Yes, I certainly do. I've played a great deal of it over the years, and, uh, and it's always uh, lovely to get back to. You're one of those triple threat actors. You're equally at home and proficient on television, on the stage, and in motion pictures. It seems to me you have the best of all possible worlds. Thank you. I hope, so. I hope history proves you right. <laughs> Well, I think history is proving that. Uh, Do you have a so. favorite between comedy and, and the, let's say, the serious parts? No, not necessarily. Uh, uh, it's nice to be offered a, a good part, whatever it is. You know, they're just not that easy to come by. And it's, uh, it's also gratifying to be able to execute them with some skill. Uh, it's interesting. I know that you have done some uh, public, some educational television, so that money is not the guiding force in your career, is it? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I have uh, I have a lot of children and ex-wives to support, and uh, they're all or... they're all marvelous. And uh, so Naturally, I actually, or you never would have married that's them. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and I have to kind of keep my nose to the grindstone. I like to do things that are that are worthwhile, and I often do do things for very little or no money at all. Well, well, what do you do for nothing? Uh, usually. Uh, Usually something that is uh, worthwhile. Uh, for instance, the Andersonville trial was done for very little well, by myself and everyone else involved. Did it for a minimum, I think, scale. And uh, it turned out to be a very, uh, a we thought, uh, a very commendable effort. Really. Well, now what about this? Here we are uh, tonight, and we're playing this back, of course, in the morning. For this uh, patent event, how does, that, uh, how does that strike you? This event? Yes. Well, I think it's very lovely. I'm uh, happy that I could uh, find the time to come. Did the man, after you did some research on General Patton, we've just talked to his son here, uh, then become a, a compelling personality to you, or was he just another part? No, all along he was very compelling, and I have an affection for General Patton that I think will stay with me as long as I live. Uh, again, uh, it's very rare when you get uh, people 
that dynamic and that colorful and that multifaceted to be able to portray. Well, we thank you very much. You've My graced pleasure. our program, and Sandy nice and I thank you very much. George C. Scott.